Hey there everybody, High Mileage Rider here, and today's video is going to be an unveiling and a review of my new modular helmet, my Scorpion EXO AT950. I'll be right back. So before we unveil this helmet, I'll just tell you why I was uh, looking for a new helmet. Over the last few years of riding and the trips we've been on, I've decided when I wanted to get a new helmet, um, there were a few new criteria I had for it. Uh, the first is, is I want a modular helmet because I wanted to be able to open the uh, front to make it easier to communicate with the other people on the road if they were, or in our group, if they didn't have a communication device. Uh, if we're looking for directions on a trip to a hotel, to a restaurant, something like that. Also, I wanted to be able, when we stopped at a gas station, to be able to just flip up the front of the helmet, have a drink, have a bite of something to eat, and then get back on the road if we were trying to make miles that day. Now, along with wanting a modular helmet, I also wanted a uh, internal sun visor, and I uh, needed the helmet to be flat enough on the side uh, that I could mount my new communication device and not interfere with the sun visor mechanism. So, that being said, let's look at the helmet. So this Scorpion EXO AT950, I picked it in what's called the Outrigger graphics pattern. It has the outline of a continent on the back, and it has red and black, which matches my bike. So, as with all my videos, uh, my opinions expressed on this helmet are just that. They're just my opinions based on my needs my wants in a new helmet. You may totally disagree with what I'm going to say, and that's all right because they make a ton of different helmets for a ton of different people's needs. So let's talk about the features on this helmet. For that, I've written down some uh, information on this paper. Please forgive me for looking down every once in a while. I want to make sure that I give you the correct information on this helmet. Okay. So, as I said, this helmet has the Outrigger uh, pattern, graphics pattern on it. Uh, this helmet is an intermediate oval shape. It is DOT approved. And this helmet comes in uh, on the scale at roughly 4 pounds or 1,815 grams, which... Uh, when you look at modular helmets, is a little on the heavier side because, of course, they have the metal mechanism for making the chin go up and everything, so it adds weight. But when you actually wear this helmet, it wears its weight very, very well. It does not feel as heavy uh, when you're riding down the road uh, as the numbers would let you believe. So this helmet obviously has a peak on it for blocking the sun, and I suppose if you're an avid off-road rider, it will keep branches out of your face as well. Um, it has a modular chin bar. So, if you look underneath, you've got a little red release here, you pull that up, and you'll notice that when this comes up, the peak goes up with it until you get to this point, at which the peak is at its highest point, and then when you lift it more, just the front of the helmet goes up. When you look inside, you'll see the pins that hold the modular helmet in place when you bring the face portion down are metal, as well as the clasp that is on the inside. It has a metal hook. This helmet has a drop-down internal sun visor. And this sun visor has Everclear anti-fog coating. So uh, you won't need to use a pin lock. The other nice thing about this sun visor is that the mechanism is located higher up on the helmet, so it does not interfere with communication devices going on the side of your helmet. Now, 
Now the visor on this is a multi-position visor and it is also uh, Everclear anti-fog coated. And the visor itself, as well as the sun visor, are anti-scratch, anti-fog. They are UVA, <clears throat> excuse me, UVA and UVB protected. This helmet is made with a polycarbonate shell and it has numerous vents on it. Uh, the first vent is on the top here and it's just a press up and down to open and close. And then that feeds into channels that distribute the air through the top of the helmet. The next vent is on the front and it is a three position. It goes from off, slide it down one to position one and that allows for defogging. Position two allows for ventilation into the helmet as well as defogging. Now, the helmet has, of course, get this open, an antimicrobial liner inside so you can take this all out, wash it, have it dry in the, uh, dry sitting out and then put it back into the helmet. Uh, there are speakers in the side for your, uh, sorry, there are speakers in the side. There are openings in the side for your speakers. Uh, and it also has a little slit on the side to allow you to get glasses on and off much easier. Uh, I had no problem putting this Senna 50C, which you'll probably remember from a previous video, uh, onto this helmet. Lots of room for the speakers and um, very, very comfortable foam seals very nicely around the back of the neck. This helmet comes with a five year warranty, which is really good in my opinion. Um, reasons that I picked this helmet over some of the others, and I did look at many other helmets in this category. I looked at the Shoei Neotech, the Klein, the Shubrith, uh, the HJC, the Bell, uh, the, the Bell MX-1, uh, and many other helmets. Uh, the main issues with those other helmets were either that the sun visor mechanism was located down here on the side and would get in the way of me mounting a communication device where I wanted to, or they were not flat on the side, or they had a cutout on the side that was removable for you to put their proprietary communication system on for that helmet, which again would negate the ability of me to put my Senna 50C on the side of the helmet. So those were all really good helmets. Um, many of them have better crash protection ratings than this helmet. It just didn't do what I needed it to do for a helmet. Now, one of the things that I forgot to mention about this helmet is it also comes with this bag of bits. And in this bag of bits are some pieces. If you choose to take the peak off the helmet, you can do so by merely using a quarter or a screwdriver to undo these screws. The peak comes off and then you get this stylish cover that goes over the top if you want to be a little bit sleeker driving down the highway. The other thing is you have a chin guard that comes with the helmet in a separate package and it just slides in in order to make a seal to decrease your road noise. So I have ridden with this helmet for approximately 1500 kilometers at the end of last season or about two weeks of riding just a little bit less. And um, it has performed exceptionally well for me. Um, being a modular helmet, I thought it was going to be a little bit noisier, uh, given that, of course, uh, here we go, along here is where the mechanism opens. That's a place for air to get in, but that wasn't the case. I actually find this helmet, this Scorpion, Scorpion EXO 18950, to be quieter than my AGV AX9 full face helmet. It's extremely quiet on the highway. Now, I'll preface that with I do ride with earplugs in all of the time in all of my helmets. So it's a fair comparison. Now, um, the 
Things that I really like about this helmet are the weight of the helmet. I find it weighs its weight very well. The comfort. The aerodynamic shape of this helmet is wonderful. I was out riding a few times at 120 kilometers an hour on the highway and I had headwinds, tailwinds, sidewinds. The helmet is not pulled side to side. It's not torquing on your head, even with the peak on. So it's uh, very good in the wind. Uh, the other thing is it's, as I said, extremely quiet and it is a great bang for the buck price of helmet. Now I got this helmet at Riverside Motorsports, one of my favorite places to go shopping. I got, get a lot of bikes there as well. And um, the normal price of this helmet is $450 Canadian. Off season, at the end of the season, I was able to pick this helmet up uh, on sale for $375. So still a good chunk of money, but not going to break the bank compared to some of the other helmets out there, such as the Shomi Neotex, the Shubriths, which in Canada can all run well over $1,000. Now, when you look at the first 1,500 kilometers that I've worn this helmet on, it has met all of the requirements I had for a helmet. And again, that was I needed a peak. I wanted a modular helmet. I wanted good ventilation. The internal sun visor. A flat surface on the side to mount my... Uh, my new Senna 50C communicator and camera. Uh, it had to have a good price, good price point. Um, it had to have a great look. And who doesn't love that graphics pattern? So, if you are looking for an intermediate priced modular helmet for adventure riding or not, even for the street, I would recommend that you at the very least have a look at this helmet, compare it to the other helmets. Depending on your needs, uh, it may suit you very well. Now, as always, if you like this video or any of the videos that we put out, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when we have future videos coming out. Hit the like button. It really does help the channel. And until we get here in the summer, or for those of you who are already riding, remember, keep your right hand cranked and the rubber side down.